Welcome back, everyone, to another edition of Rudy's Rant. Pardon my calling out the podcast. We talk facts over feelings. I am your host, Rudy Rodriguez Shomot. And this is the first video I've done in about six days because I've been under the weather and you can hear it in my voice. I'm going to do my best to power through this one because I have to talk about this today. Um, hopefully, I won't have a coughing spasm and I can edit it out so it doesn't look so bad. But if, if it does happen, but I got to talk about this real fast because. It makes no sense whatsoever to see what has transpired today with the unrivaled basketball league and their team selection. But before we jump in, I want to thank you all for your comments um, and concern for my health. Um, just a really bad cold. I mean, a cold that maybe bronchitis, I'm on some medications. It, it has sucked and, and obviously has put a damper in things and given not taking away my ability to produce content over the last week because it would have been terrible. <laughs> I mean, my voice, my throat doesn't hurt that much right now. So that's why I'm able to do this because I couldn't have done this the last few days. My throat was just killing me. All that said, the Unrivaled League dropped its team announcements today in a 22 minute video on YouTube. Needless to say, it was as pathetic a production as one could possibly imagine. It was pathetic, like I said, just absolutely pathetic. It was embarrassing, in fact. You had an opportunity to do a wow, and you failed. But what's new? It's a league that's going to fail because of how they're positioning it. They can get all these sponsors because they're using that lure of the golden ticket to the Willy Wonka Chocolate Factory. That golden ticket being Caitlin Clark. They can use that lure and hope that People will jump on and support this, hoping that Caitlin Clark, while she's playing golf pro-ams, in fact, she's playing another one, another one this week with Zach Johnson, I think I saw. But you had a chance to do a wow. And instead, you did a typical trash-ass edited video production of six coaches, four of whom are male, which I think is even more ridiculous. Sorry, guys. I keep saying I think women should coach women. It's just the way I feel. But no, they hired four men to coach women. In fact, Phil Handy was LeBron's favorite coach. Tell me why Bill Handy is coaching women's basketball. Please explain this to me. This man has been a men's basketball coach for 14 years. He's coached the Lakers, the Cavs, the Raptors, and now the Lakers again before, you know, he before his departure. And now he's a coach with unrivaled. I, I don't know what people think, but that's a massive, massive demotion to me. But beyond that, why is he coaching women? Don't call me sexist here. I'm not being sexist. I really believe that the women, women should be given opportunities to coach women. Why are four of the six coaches in this league men? It makes no sense. Makes no sense. And then. Let me let me take a look again at this crap because this this is just comedy to me. The coaches who are the hell? I mean, I, one of them is Teresa Weatherspoon. Um, and then there's Nola Nola Henry. Who the hell is Nola Henry? With all respect, Nola Henry's thirty. Thirty. I've never heard of 
Nola Henry. She was a below average college basketball player. When you Google her name, nothing comes up. She played 118 games of college basketball. She averaged four points in her career in college basketball in UMass and College of Charleston. She's been a GA in college. I, 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 it says that she's a coach for the Los Angeles Sparks on LinkedIn for two years. She was an intern for the Connecticut Sun. I guess she fits what I'm looking for, but I've never heard of her. You would think that you might look for people that have some level of name value that might attract the common viewer. So unless, unless Cheryl Miller is looking to coach in the WNBA, wouldn't your first call be out to Cheryl Miller? Wouldn't you be contacting? I'm not going to bullshit you here. Wouldn't you contact Cheryl Swoops? I don't care about what the hell she's been saying publicly. I think she's a dog shit person. But she would bring attention. Wouldn't you look for names? How about Lisa Leslie? Again, these aren't even coaches right now. They're not coaches in any, in any capacity at this moment. But you would think that you would look for people that could bring a value name-wise to your to your league. Now, let's go offer it to Adam Harrington. I mean, this is I'm not disrespecting these individuals. I, I I'm serious. I'm not. I, Adam Harrington, he played for nine years. I'm sorry if there's a beeping noise. There's a there's a truck outside my house. I don't know what the hell's going on. But he played professionally in the NBA for a year, I guess. Played overseas for about eight. Was an assistant coach with the Thunder and the Nets. And now he's with Unrivaled. What the fuck is going on, man? I, I, I mean, is this what we're doing? Is this really what we're doing? DJ Sackman. I guarantee most of y'all don't have any fucking idea who these people are. Because I don't know who these fucking people are. DJ Sackman. 37 years old. He has a website. He's an NBA skills coach. Chief executive officer of Hoop Study. He's an influencer. He's not even an actual coach. I'm looking for where it shows him actually being a coach. So again, DJ Sackman, I'm looking at his website. He's a world-renowned basketball coach, speaker, influencer, and entrepreneur, yet I've never heard of him. It's Hey, you know what? He, he's a marketer of himself. I, I can't find a damn thing on this guy other than a bunch of stuff. He, he teaches online basketball education he's 37 I, I mean I, I have no idea he's a brand ambassador for adidas no clue no clue like like the stuff you find on him is is, is him talking about himself his own website <laughs> like there's no articles or anything like that that talk about him <clears throat> And you got Andrew Wade. Who the hell is Andrew Wade? Andrew Wade. Well, I typed up Andrew Wade, and the first thing came was some musician. So it's obviously not him. Andrew Wade, player development assistant coach with the Washington Mystics for three years. Before that, so his career is being an assistant coach for the Mystics. I guess. 
like I said, I, I these these coaches are not. You had an opportunity to make a bang with with people that people have heard of. Instead, they went with three guys. You three guys, you've never heard of, guys and men. One woman you've never heard of. A longtime NBA assistant coach who's clearly taken a demotion. And must just must just be bored right now and doesn't have another job, so he's just saying, why not? And Teresa Weatherspoon. That's your those are your coaches. Now, let's go into the production of this thing. They're in a room, looks like a boardroom with an office or whatever. You have a woman who's leading it. And a guy with a beard who I I presume, I'm going to presume is Nafisa Collier's husband. Because I haven't seen, I have not seen, um, I didn't see them put a name for him. And I saw him put a name for the woman. She's like some marketing person. No, that, that wasn't, that, that couldn't be Nafisa Collier's husband. Nah. That wasn't the feast. I don't know who that guy was, man, because the picture as I see of the feast of Collier's husband, that's not him. So you have two people, again, two people that you've never heard of, that you don't know, who are leading this conversation in a boardroom and they're doing their little silly pods. By the way, the, the, the pods were a joke. The pod thing was completely ridiculous. And I want to pull up the pod thing again. Because the pods made absolutely no sense. Because all they really showed was which players they view as scrubs. They don't even realize how silly it, 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 they don't even realize how silly it's how silly it looked. And maybe they do. I hope they should, but they probably don't. Because they put these women in pods, and then I'm trying to pull up the actual pods. So I'm going to run it back a second here because I kind of uh, skipped over some stuff. And pardon me because I'm, like I said, I'm trying to push through this video because I want to get something out on this because this really is crazy what I watched today. You have the three people in the room besides the coaches. I got their names now. Luke Cooper, he's the president of basketball operations. Chloe Pavlich is the one who's talking in most of that video, executive vice president of growth. And Claire Duellius, executive vice president and general manager. Who are these people? You want know who these people are? We have a league now that's basically being run by a bunch of young kids. I'm 46 years old. I'll be 47 next month. Clara Duellius is the only person with any level of experience in management of anything basketball related, corporate related. She was the former general manager of the Minnesota Lynx, which is wild to me that she would leave her job as the GM of the team that just went to the WNBA finals to go try to, to build a league. That's completely unestablished, and that's probably not going to last very long. It's very interesting that you would walk away from your job as a GM of the Minnesota Lynx, unless you got fired, and I'm not aware of it. Chloe Pavlich, she was a player at Baylor. She was a GA. She was an assistant coach at Baylor. GA, I think I saw UConn, assistant coach at Baylor. She's like 30. Luke Cooper. Another one. Looks like he's like 35. These are all very young people. Very young people that they have running this league. They jump out with this, these pods. And they've already determined in their video that pod E is the best pod. It's the pod of the, the, the cornerstones of each team which to me is another example of insulting 
because I think you could have made this a real production. Because you basically decided, you basically decided that Brianna Stewart, Angel Reese, Satu Sabali, Nafisa Collier, Alyssa Thomas, who you just got, and Aaliyah Boston are your six best players in this league. And I don't agree with that. I, I don't agree with it. Your most marketable player that you have in the league right now is on this list, Angel Reese. But Aaliyah Boston is not one of the six best players they've got. Neither is Angel Reese. Neither is Satu Sabali. Neither is Alyssa Thomas. Alyssa Thomas might be a really good WNBA player in a five-on-five scheme because she's not needed to make buckets. This is three-on-three. You've got to score. You've got to score. Your best players in this league are guards. The guards are the cornerstones of these teams. The athletic guards who can push the tempo and hit buckets. Those are your best players in this type of scenario. That's my opinion. But I disagree with them, so whatever. You have them do a little chit-chat. They could have made this a two-hour thing. Promoted it, put it on a live broadcast on YouTube. No, no different than any podcast there is. Make it a live feed. Put a chat. Allow people, fans, to communicate with you through the chat. Have someone monitoring the chat. Respond to the chat. Make this thing interactive. You had a chance to be different. Instead, we got a corporate video. That's what you gave, a corporate video. This doesn't even include the rosters at the end, which are honestly irrelevant. We will get into that in a second. But you got an opportunity to make this some type of interactive thing and have real debates on players on what teams. Instead, you got snippet comment here, snippet comment there. Stupid comments about development of players. Development of what? These are professionals. Is the unrivaled league of a fucking minor league basketball league to the WNBA? Is that what they're trying to build themselves up to be? To say, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We're, we're here to develop the talent about how Arike Agumbawale can play with XYZ person and pass the ball or not pass the ball and blah, blah, blah. What? The, the, the commentary, the, the, the conversation, stupid, useless, pointless. They start you off by just dragging names into a into a sheet. They just dragged a whole bunch of names into a sheet. There was no real conversation in this thing about players going where. This is stupid. They had a chance to make it cool, and they failed badly. Can you imagine you have player people on the chats talking talking trash? Them talking trash back? That's interesting. That's fun. Or people saying, oh boy, that team's gonna bust up that team. Oh, Angel Reese about to get her butt kicked by XYZ, or Nafisa is gonna get her butt kicked by XYZ. Like, well, anything. Anything. You've already you've already devalued the league by putting in backups, bench players. Bench players. With respect to all these professional women athletes, you have players like Ray Burrell, who they added recently, who played 37 games, 37 games and started seven. That means they had an injury. She's a backup. She's not even among the 60 best players in the WNBA. Kate Martin is not one of the 60 best players in the WNBA. Lexi Hall, for the first half of the season, was DMP coaches' decisions in multiple games. 
I'm a Lexi Ho fan, but Lexi Ho is not a top 60 player in the WNBA. In a perfect world, Lexi Ho is coming off your bench. She's not starting. And man, well, they built her up in this thing about how she's an elite three-point shooter. No, she's not. She's a wide open three-point shooter who is wide open and gets wide open looks because of who she plays with. Nothing else is expected of her. Play defense, hit corner three-point shots. It's very simple. But if you ever had to give her the ball and say, make a contested three, it ain't going in. The league is devalued already because you took backups. Players that are nowhere near top 30 or top 36. Some are not top 50. Like Marina Mabry was a backup for the Connecticut Sun. She wasn't a starter until the girl got hurt in the first round against Indiana. She wasn't even starting. She started for Chicago. She didn't start for Connecticut. But you have this opportunity to make this an interactive thing with fans or whoever the fans are that you're trying to attract. I think the fact that I'm looking at this video right now on YouTube, on their channel, the channel that only has 12,400 subscribers, I'm not going to compare this to myself or to our podcast. We are a new podcast. But let me tell you something. But yeah, this is Unrivaled Basketball has 12,400 subscribers. And in six hours since this 22-minute video played, it's gotten 41,223 views. Honestly? That's pathetic. That's pathetic. That's that's honestly pathetic. Right? You can disagree with me, but I can easily pull up videos that were pu pu published, published in the last six hours that have way more views than that. I mean, I'm looking at a guy here who I follow on, um, on YouTube, who I subscribe to his page. He posted a video eight hours ago has 41,000 views, a nine-minute video. I, I, you, you know, you're, I'm just scrolling through videos, just taking a look. I just, I just don't think that's that many views when you are supposed to be some big thing. It's just a little bit off to me. Hell, a WWE video was posted a day ago has damn near 600,000 views. The awful coaching guy that I followed three hours ago, 17,000 views. Here's a video from Stephen A. Smith six hours ago from ESPN, 185,000 views. So this is this big news, this big thing. And you got 41,400, now it's 41,486 views. I know it's probably a little bit higher than that because that's what you see now because the back number is, is probably a little higher, hasn't published yet. But really? This is what you got? You could have made this a show. You made it a joke. You made it a, a boilerplate. Templated production that was not interesting, had no drama, had no debate, had no back and forth, nothing, nothing at all. The most whoa moment is announcing who's coaching who. Don't know how they determine that. These are things that could have been done. So let's say, let's say, for example, you, and this is what I would have done. You draft teams. I mean, you put, 
You can do it digitally where there's no one, it's or, or round, like, you know, ping pong balls. <clears throat> no different than the lottery. The first ping pong ball comes up. That's the coach that drafts first. Then the second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth. And you know how it goes? A snake draft. So it's not unfair. You get the first six, then you go back and forth. Those coaches could have drafted players. But it doesn't mean that those teams would have been their teams. And that's where you could have made this fun and different. Instead, you create, we're going to have a conversation about how to put teams together that are most fair. Fair? If you think these teams are fair, you're crazy. The best team out in this, the best team in this thing is the team that I believe is uh, the one that Teresa Weatherspoon got, the vinyl. Enrique Agumbawale, Ryan Howard, Aliyah Boston, and Dierica Hamby. And Jordan Canada's decent and Ray Burrell's a scrub. This is the best team. And I mean, by far, by far. Let me find this again. Like this is this is a joke. You could have done it the way I suggested, a snake draft. The the coaches draft players, and then at the end, you digitally select coaches for each team. You could do the ping pong balls again. Do 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 do. This is the team that you're. That's your team. That's your team. I mean, it, it would have been. To me, it would have been. So it would make you, even though you're drafting this team, make you draft. It would, it would, it would mess with how you draft. You want to be different, right? Now it says there's an article here on ESPN.com that says Caitlin Clark won't play in unrivaled league. Sources say that just broke their fucking heart that published at 431 today on ESPN <clears throat> ain't that something if that is true adding a sixth player was a disaster and stupid but here are your teams Nafisa Collier is with Skylar Diggins Smith, Natasha Cloud, Alicia Gray, and Shakira Austin. And she has a uh whatchamacallit? A wild card because there's two empty spots still. There's two empty spots. So she's a big playing with she has one big on her team and a bunch of guards. In fact, you want to be real, undersized guards. She has three point guards on her team. Alicia Gray is a combo. Alicia Gray is a combo guard. Skylar Diggins Smith is a point guard, and Natasha Cloud's a point guard. <clears throat> and then you have the Phantom, who has a wild card Jackie Young, Marina Mabry, Tiffany Hayes. Satu Sabali and Brittany Griner. No bullshit. That team is terrible. That team is terrible and uninteresting. Tiffany Hayes is a backup. Tiffany Hayes was literally retired from the WNBA and then came back. You have three shooting guards on the same team. You have no point guard on this team. They don't have a point guard. You still need a point guard to get, handle the ball. And then you have a slow, plodding Brittany Griner. Sotheby is obviously their best player. This team stinks. Team Rose, Chelsea Gray, Kyle Copper, Brittany Sykes, Lexi Hull, Angel Reese, Azura Stevens. <clears throat> Pardon me if I don't laugh. 
Chelsea Gray can't shoot. Angel Reese can't shoot. I don't know, Dick about Azura Stevens. Let me pull her back up again. I don't know anything. I don't know anything about Azura Stevens. No idea who she is. She's six six. Okay, she can't shoot. She's a big. Well, actually, she's decent. But yeah, you're not having her shooting jump shots. <laughs> she shoots too much, if you ask me. Like, th this is stupid. I mean, Lexi Hall, Brittany Sykes. Brittany Sykes is a five nine guard. I have no, I, I don't know who this girl really is. Like, like this is the thing that they, they're not known players to most people. This team is not very good. And then you have Team Laces: Kelsey Plum, Courtney Williams, Kayla McBride, Kate Martin, Alyssa Thomas, and Stephanie Dolson. So a slow big, a power forward who can't, who wants to be a point guard. And then basically three people who do the same shit. Kelsey Plum, Courtney Williams, and Kevin Wright are the same player. Now let's look at the other component. Kelsey Plum is Kate Martin's teammate. Courtney Williams is Kayla McBride's teammate. Tiffany Hayes and Jackie Young are teammates. Oh, I'm sorry. Another team here, the last team, was the one with uh, Team Mist. Brianna Stewart, Jewel Loy, former teammates, Courtney Vandersloot, Dijanae Carrington, Rakea Jackson, and Aaliyah Edwards. That That's probably the second best team to me because I think the team with Ogumba Wale, Ryan Howard, uh, De'Ara Hamby, and Aaliyah Boston is better. It's deeper. It's it's better overall. It has legit players at every position. You're not getting Caitlin Clark. She so opened up. You still have two spots to fill. That she's not going to be one of them. And then you have wild cards for two teams. I, there's nothing interesting about this at all. Nothing. Nothing. The most interesting thing, I guess, is that Angel Reese and Lexi Hull are on the same team, and Lexi Hull is good friends with Caitlin Clark. So that might be a little bit weird. But then they had in this production a 30-minute break that they didn't show us. And they come back and they announce the coaches. And I'm sitting here like, wouldn't that 30-minute conversation have been something that we would want to see? That would make sense. It, it would make it exciting. That's my thought. Or was that 30-minute conversation bullshit and did not actually exist? See, that's what happens when you don't have transparency. We still don't know where they're playing these games. We still don't know where these players are staying. Are they staying in a hotel in, a, a, in an Ultimate Fighter-style house that has 20 bedrooms on Star Island or something like that? We don't know. We know nothing. They fucked up. They blew it. And these sponsors, I don't know if you've been watching, folks, the ratings for college women's basketball this so far have been horrendous. They've been terrible, folks. Terrible. The ratings have been terrible. No one's watching women's college women's basketball right now. No one. So we're gonna go. So we're gonna go bank on this league that's missing three of its most marketable players. The three being Caitlin Clark, Asia Wilson, and Sabrina Ionescu. obviously the most marketable player in the world because since she's left, left college basketball, no one gives a shit about women's college basketball. And I said that last year or earlier this year. I said next year, you're going to see the numbers for women's college basketball come back down to their norm median. It will not be 18 million watching the final the championship. 
you might get 10. It won't be 14.6 watching the final four. It'll be six, five, just like it was in the past. The players you have there still do not draw. The players you have here in this league do not draw. This is not interesting. You fucked up, Unrivaled. You had a chance to make yourself fucking interesting. You had a chance to tell a story, and you blew it. You try to be so slick with this begging Caitlin Clark shit. Real talk, a real league wouldn't need Caitlin Clark. But you're not a real league, and that's what you showed your hand. This was your poker hand. You know, whatever, using envelopes. This was your poker hand. You showed your cards. The second you said, Caitlin Clark will always have a spot here, you gave, you tilted, you, you gave your hand away. It meant you were relying on her appearance to make your league matter. It meant you were relying on her to get these sponsors. These sponsors won't be back next year. When they see the dog shit ratings that come out of this thing, because they will be dog shit. Their first weekend will be their best weekend. After that, no one's going to give a fuck. No one's going to care. This is going to be a catastrophe. Worse than I even expected because they had so many chances to make this shit kick ass today, and they gave you that. I'm going to link it in the bio. If you haven't seen it, but they gave you that. A weak ass, soft ass, trash can conversation with four male coaches, three that you've never heard of in your life, a woman you've never heard of, and Teresa Weatherspoon. You failed in your coaches' decisions, who you chose. You failed. In the way you did this this thing, this 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 announcement, because this was recorded yesterday or the day before. This wasn't recorded today. This was recorded at least at the latest yesterday. And this is what you thought. I mean, I mean, this is whack. It's fucking whack. That's all I got. My throat's starting to hurt, but yeah, that was pathetic. Let me know what your thoughts are, folks. I'd love to hear what you got to say about this one because I just thought this was a complete they, – they, they blew it. It's going to be hard enough to get people to watch this shit, but you had a chance to potentially create some type of buzz, excitement. Hell, you could have announced this is where we're going to practice – Practices will be open to the public, autograph sessions, all kinds of things. You didn't do that. You, you didn't do that. It's like you have a big secret. And now ESPN's dropped this shit that sources say Caitlin Clark will not play, which I figured was going to be what's going to happen. But they banked on this trash. They bent their whole trash can league on Caitlin Clark showing up and changing her mind. They couldn't change it. She's playing golf. She's having a good time. She's chilling. Appreciate y'all, folks. I'm going to try to do my best to get another video out tomorrow. Those starting to hurt up, like I mentioned a second ago, starting to hurt again. Hope I get better in the next couple of days and I can be back in full action and we can actually do a real member live next Tuesday. Um, but thank you again. I appreciate y'all. Much love. Facts over feelings. This is Rudy's rant. Come on now.